Hello everyone, Mark here. So today we are doing part five of the six principles of training series, covering the six principles of training uh, by Kondo Katsuki Sensei. You can find the text that uh, we'll be covering today in the book Daitoryu Aiki Jujutsu Hiden Mokuruku Ikkajo, the book right behind me. Um, however, if you cannot acquire a copy of the book, uh, I will put a link in the description below to a copy of the text that can be found at koryo.com. Uh, today we will be covering kuzushi or unbalancing. Just like with all the other entries in the series, we will start first by doing a reading of the portion of the text that we'll be covering. After that, we will rewind to the beginning and we'll do a sentence per sentence breakdown and uh, try to add some flesh to the bone essentially and um, you know add a little bit more uh, information in context. So without further ado, let's get started. Kuzushi, unbalancing. From ancient time, the admonishment to attack where the opponent has been unbalanced has been a fundamental axiom of Japanese combative theory. In the main Daitoryu Aiki Jujutsu, we see that the term Aiki has been placed before the word Jujutsu, and it would not be an exaggeration to say that this Aiki refers mainly, through not, though not exclusively, to the principle of Kuzushi or unbalancing the opponent. Indeed, a great many of Daitoryu's oral transmission and inner teachings pertain to the various subtle aspects of Kuzushi. So that's the text that we have uh, today. Let's rewind to the beginning and uh, <clears throat> try to have a look at each sentence uh, in isolation and, and try to squeeze out some, uh, some additional um, data out of it, some additional information. So, from ancient time, the admonishment to attack where the opponent has been unbalanced has been a fundamental axiom of Japanese combative theory. Um, the idea of unbalancing an opponent, I mean, is not necessarily you know a new idea, nor uh, is it necessarily something that I would argue is uh, particular to uh, Japanese combative systems. Um, I'm sure you can find equivalents in Chinese combative system and probably other parts of the world as well. And what is interesting though is uh, to notice that um, there's always, you know, we're talking about at least a thousand year of history where, and then, you know, if you connect to old uh, Chinese uh, uh, military uh, military treaty and uh, or like books discussing uh, military strategy, um, there is this notion of you know kind of going with the flow and disbalancing the opponent in the action basically right uh, in, in, instead of just you know being it being purely about the disbalancement itself. Um, it's not really discussed here, but I think uh, anyone who will study and it's true in Daitoryu, it's going to be true in other, you know, Jiu-Jitsu tradition as well as classical martial arts or even, you know, modern practices like Judo. You know, that aspect of disbalancing the opponent is, you know, basically key, right? Instead of kind of forcing your way through, the idea is to kind of be a little bit smarter about it um, and to conserve your energy. Now, this being said, and, you know, the, the uh, text speaks a little bit of Aiki a little bit later. I think in uh, practice, some practices, uh, or perhaps in some circles, there's a bit of a uh, misinterpretation as to why you have this conservation of energy in the act of disbalancing, basically. Um, for a lot of, for many people that I've met, it feels more as it's a, that it's about you know being smart and clever than it is about conserving your energy uh, in a competitive context. And by that, I mean, um, you know, being pragmatic about it. If you are in a competitive environment, or like if you're in a situation of combat, and it doesn't have to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, we're, we could be, you know, military operations, or it could be, you know, a, a whole bunch of different situations. You know, the last thing you want to do is to be... Uh, fighting tired, ideally, right? Now, you want to be in the best condition possible if you're going to be in any sort of altercation. With that said, um, once an altercation has started or once a sort of conflict has started, you don't necessarily have control uh, over how long it's going to go and how quickly it's going to finish, right? 
And so to develop the um, body mechanics and the habits to basically try to not leverage strength, you can still cultivate it, you can still cultivate your strength, but to leverage it to a minimum and instead basically try to disbalance the opponent through other means uh, is something that I think has a long history, basically, in Japan and you know, in traditional Chinese decks as well. Um, and I think that is what is uh, particular of you know the notion of kuzushi, uh, of the, uh, unbalancing the opponent, in um, you know classical Japanese martial arts. Uh, you know, I'm saying, I'm, I spoke I spoke about judo too. I think it can be true of other practices as well, and it's also true of certain modern martial arts like judo. Let's continue. In the name Daitori Aiki Jujutsu, we can see that the term Aiki has been placed before the word Jujutsu, and it would not be an exaggeration to say that this Aiki refers mainly, though not exclusively, to the principle of Kuzushi or unbalancing the opponent. Um, I think that's kind of really important. Um, you know, one um, notion, like, you know, I, I don't remember what the exact quote is but when you know asked what is aiki uh sokoku sensei the the, the restorer of, of the art you know the one who popularized popularized uh, popularized it sorry uh starting in the 1900s um you know basically said it was to defeat your opponent at a glance without fighting essentially right that's kind of the essence of it all um so fundamentally um I think what we need to get out of the sentence, there's a lot to unpack actually here. Um, first, yes, Aiki is in front of Jujutsu, but it is for Jujutsu, right? It is for a um, combative purpose, right? Um, now, arguably, yes, you can repurpose a whole bunch of things in life, but I think as part of a practice uh, that has been uh, preserved to some degree, uh, you can't ignore the fact that you know, initially it was meant to, you know, fight you know, to, to some degree, right? You know, so the combative spirit at least needs to be there if, even if you're not necessarily combative in action. Um, now, the notion that Aiki is about, uh, in, in large part, about disbalancing the opponent, I think is also key, right? It's really more about how you actually get to disbalance the opponent, right? And the various strategies that you're using, you know, um, and the, the, the various mechanics that you're going to be using, really. Um, but, um, you know, I generally try not to go and discuss too much in detail uh, these aspects. Uh, but again, like, you know, it's not something magical in nature, right? You know, uh, a lot of it relates to the uh, previous uh, concept that we've already discussed in this series, you know, how do you leverage your breathing, you know? Um, you know, how do you actually, you know, leverage distance and, the, you know, manage the distance? Um, you know, the notion of etiquette and how it actually pertains to, um, you know, either avoiding a combative situation or at least controlling its initial, you know, uh, how it's going to get started, so to speak. Um, though a lot of it actually connects to that, really, as part, a part of... Uh, you know, Daitoryu and, you know, arguably the notion of Aiki, I suppose. Um, so to say that it's really about Kuzushi, well, Kuzushi is, is, is the thing that you're actually after, really. Um, because, you know, once the opponent is, you know, disbalanced, then, you know, you, you can gain the upper hand with minimal effort. And I think that's really, you know, the idea of what's being discussed in this sentence. Um, Indeed, a great many of Daitoryu's oral transmission and inner, inner teaching pertains to the various sub and subtle aspect of Kuzushi. So, you know, basically what I was saying. But again, you know, that can be, you know, that sentence could have been about the various subtle aspect of Rei or about Mai or about, you know, all the other aspects that we've discussed before, right? Um, I think, you know, what to be gained out of this sentence is more that um, you know, the culture itself and its doctrine as far as, you know, the, the, the concept of, that are applicable to hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, um, you know, basically there, there are certain idiosyncrasies that are specific to the culture, right? And, and, to, and there are certain things that are specifically studied that otherwise might, may not be studied in other practice and vice versa. There might be certain things that you're going to find in other practices that 
are not really taken into consideration in the ITO, right? And that's fine, right? Uh, I, I think, you know, trying to go too broad in a given uh, doctrine for a given culture and, 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 and tradition um, risks essentially, you know, seeing the, the the, the, that tradition basically just kind of explode and, and lose its flavor and lose its you know wisdom a bit, right? Um, I think it's probably one reason that explains you know why you had such variety in, in the past in, in terms of traditions, right? Obviously, there there is a lot of regional regionalism that was going on, and you know just people doing their own things in their little part of the country. But you know, I think the estimates were like that there were about a thousand five hundred um classical martial arts tradition you know uh, i can't remember at which point in time but like there there there's was a point in time where it was in the thousands um and and i think you know part of it is that yeah you know everyone has that little bit of wisdom and they want to you know make sure to um keep it alive right and this is arguably something that's rather Japanese, I think. I don't know if there's you know, an equivalent in other parts of the world. I'd be interested to hear about it in the uh, comments if anyone has this, uh, something to say about it. But, like, even today, you're going to have, like, for instance, those uh, omikoshi, like, you know, the uh, portable shrine. Uh, if you, you know, visited Japan at some point of the year and you were in the right place in the right time, uh, you will have seen those uh, basically portable shrine that people, you know, carry around, uh, for normally one day uh, around the neighborhood, uh, they go from, you know, often store to store and the store are, are sponsoring the event. Um, and they're basically christening or, well, not really christening, but blessing the store in some way, right? And it's really, really original. We're talking about like the na like neighborhood in a, you know, city in a ward within a prefecture within the country, right? Like, you know, we're talking about a few kilometer square top, really. Um, and each region is going to have their own festival at their own time, and they're going to have their own idiosyncrasies and their own little thing. And if you speak about it to the people that have been living in those areas, um, you know, for, for decades, they're going to tell you stories about that regions, and, you know, there's going to be little things that are really unique about it that, that basically are kind of preserved through often it's the elderly, but you know just you know because they, they have the time to talk to you often they're just they're just around and you know they have the time to 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 share some of that history right uh, and here is the kind it's kind of the same thing right you know that that um you know daitoryu is a tradition that arguably exploded and became in comparison you know quite popular and quite rapidly uh, and because of that, I think, you know, it's easy to forget that, well, it wasn't much of a practice at all. You know, it was unknown basically prior to the, nine, the, the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and a lot of traditions are kind of like that today. You know, even if you go to um, the uh, Kobudo Shinkokai or the Kobudo Kyokai um, directory, uh, like tradition directory, they have listing of traditions that are part of those organizations. And I would guess that a you know most martial artists wouldn't be able to you know recognize more than five tradition maybe out of i think it's uh each one has at any given point in time anywhere between like 50 and 60 registered right um and, and those are just kind of the major lineages and traditions so um it's um yeah there, there's a lot of variety i guess is what i'm trying to say here um there, there's a you no know, a lot of different ways you can skin a cat there's also a lot of cross pollination so you know the aspect of disbalancement again you know if you study the text and this is one reason why i'm really interested in studying the history is that for the purpose of the channel i study a lot of of course daitoryu's history right but as a researcher i'm broadly research other traditions as well right and you know once you start to look at traditions even those that don't seem to have a historical connection you start to see that well they're drawing from the same inspiration and you know either mysticism or you know other chinese traditions or some of the more streamlined japanese tradition for instance right um so there, there's always going to be some um you know 
cross pollination, even if, at, if it's at a distance, and there's always going to be some some kinship between the, uh, some of the tradition, right? Um, however, the format of training is always going to be rather specific, um, and it's you know basically needs to be followed, not because it's you know good on its own necessarily, but because it's what matches the actual remaining of the tradition as a whole, right? So. Again, another reason why that education needs to go beyond just, you know, training and, and, and you know, getting physically involved, but you also need to basically have a bit of discussion time, you know, and I'm putting even historical research aside, really just, you know, talking to your senpai and, and you know, getting into, I don't want to say philosophy because that's not quite right, but, you know, getting into just discussion in earnest, let's say, about, you know, the, the nature of the tradition itself and how it should be perceived, interpreted, and uh, taking some time uh, look at, to look at the various perspectives, right? Because even, even within a given tradition, you're going to have people that are going to have different takes on it. So I think that covers it. Uh, honestly, about Kuzushi itself, there isn't a whole lot to say. Kuzushi is Kuzushi, and that's that. I mean, you know, you disbalance an opponent, and, you know, there's different ways to dis uh, disbalance an opponent. Daito Ryu has ways that are specific to its tradition, following its own philosophy and doctrine, and that's generally going to be... There's going to be some version of that in other tradition. You speak about, you no know, Tenjin Shin Ryu, Kito Ryu, Ishiguro Ryu, uh, or whatever. You know, they're, they're, they're all going to have their little um, idiosyncrasies as to how you're actually going to get there. Um, it just happens to be that in Daitoryu, a lot of it is kind of crystallized in a single term, uh, and that's Aiki, and the nature of what that means is generally something that's uh, kept close to the chest by the tradition. It's not really spoken about all that much but, uh, outside uh, of, you know, a private uh, training session, but basically just, you know, training, right? It's not, it's not exactly that it's a secret, it's just that, you know, um, if you can't really talk about it in a productive way, just don't talk about it. It's kind of like the idea behind it. Just, you know, trying to, you know, convey what it, that, that's supposed to be over the internet isn't something that actually is, uh, I think, feasible, honestly, except, you know, when speaking generalities. Um, if you have any questions or comments about uh, today's uh, topic, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. As always, thank you for your time, and I'll see you next time.